Days, weeks, and even years of contemplating is considered a normal part of the INFJ door slamming process. With the tendency to give one too many chances and the uncertainty when it comes to their own emotions, the process leading up to a door slam is never easy. So, what are the most essential questions an INFJ needs to ask themselves before taking the leap and never looking back? Welcome, or welcome back, psychos! That's exactly what we'll be discussing in today's video. Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. Alright, let's jump right into it, starting with number 1. What do I really need? The forever asked question of the INFJ. What do I really need? Notorious for people pleasing and putting others before themselves, INFJs are usually much more absorbed in what other people need to be happy. However, due to their analytical nature, their need for constant self-improvement, and their secondary extroverted feeling function that causes them to absorb other people's feelings, this selfless personality type rarely really knows or questions what it is they need to change in their lives in order to be happy. Sure, it's easy to avoid tension in the moment or stay blissfully ignorant to the things that truly need to be adjusted. But INFJs need to keep in mind that it's the little things left unattended to that will eventually snowball into serious unhappiness and dissatisfaction in the future. So what is it that you need as an INFJ? Well, we'll help you get started. Most INFJs need things like supportive family members, like-minded friends, ample amounts of alone time, the ability to creatively express themselves, proper work-life balance, and work that allows them the freedom to use their creativity. What else can you add to that list? What do you really need from life, aside from what your connections are or aren't giving? Number 2. What is my minimum requirement of others? Sometimes, it's not what someone did to an INFJ, but rather what they didn't do for the connection. Although boundary crossing may be considered the one-way track to door slamville, which we'll discuss later in the video, sometimes it's more so about the shortcoming that INFJs sense within their surrounding connections that encourage them to ultimately door slam. The tricky thing is that INFJs know themselves to have unnecessarily high expectations of themselves and others at times, so high that some say they're unattainable. Not only that, but this extroverted feeler may not even know how strict the requirements of others are, or what those requirements even are. So, in the simplest of terms, INFJs need to figure out what it is they expect of people in general before concluding that someone deserves to be door slammed. Once this analytical type stops placing requirements on their connections on a whim and actually sets a foundation for what they want, like we discussed in the first step, then they can go ahead and begin to decipher what they need from others. Not only is it considerably easier to communicate these expectations to people once you've gone through them yourself, but it also gives the INFJ the ability to either rationalize the requirement if not ultimately cut it out from their pickiness altogether. Number 3. Did I take significant time and space? We'd hate to say it, dear INFJs, but maybe it's your fault. Maybe you want to door slam certain people because you didn't take the necessary time out of the connection for yourself. Maybe you didn't take the time to really question whether or not you've communicated the necessary balance within a relationship that you need to be happy. Heck, maybe burnout has you sensing conflict where there is none to be found. Now, we don't want to gaslight ourselves into thinking we're going crazy and that there isn't a door slam to be contemplated. However, before taking the leap, every INFJ needs to ask themselves if they've personally taken the necessary time and space to think things through with a clear conscience. This is so crucial for this type in particular because even the slightest hint of conflict can drive them into defense mode. And although INFJs aren't known for lashing out or reacting without thinking, they need to constantly be questioning whether or not their inner reactions are out of an attempt to shield themselves from deeper injuries. So, 
if an INFJ were to find themselves in the heat of the moment where they think a door slam is the only option, stop, drop, and run. If it's possible, it's best to seize the raw emotion of the moment in order to later pair that emotional information with their strong intuitive skills, in order to get a true and accurate projection of the matter. After all, introverted intuition is the INFJ's inner compass-like superpower for directing them out of harm's way. And if it's given the space to work its magic, you'd be surprised at how trustworthy it really is. Number 4. Did they cross any serious boundaries? Speaking of boundaries, INFJs have a difficult time with boundary setting and boundary keeping, and it seems to be a difficulty that follows them through life in different ways. They may not be the clearest or most stern when it comes to personal bounds within their connections, but that's because most of the INFJ's boundaries are considered common sense in most instances, or at least to them they are. And because of these unspoken of, common sense rooted boundaries, there are some offenses that INFJs find merely unforgivable right off the bat. When it comes to threats or crimes against their bodies, financial independence, personal voice, mental health, or family, INFJs will resort to door slamming to avoid any further disruption to their ability to move through their lives with full, comfortable range of motion. In these instances, there's not much thinking or analyzing going on, but rather the INFJ's unique approach of the fight or flight mode. It's as if it's not even up to the INFJ in these situations whether or not the circumstance calls for a true door slam, because once the threshold for what they cannot tolerate has been reached, INFJs subconsciously give themselves all the permission to bolt that door shut no matter what their people-pleasing instincts are pulling them to do. In reality, this self-sufficient type will always put their security, safety, and freedom above all else, especially in terms of boundaries with others. Number 5. Are they genuinely sorry? Crossing clearly communicated boundaries is one thing the INFJ will most likely never come back from, especially if it's happened more than once. However, for other instances and fallouts, sometimes INFJs can find a soft spot in their hearts that allows them to avoid the door slam completely. With the ability to sense when someone is being distrustful, most people with this personality type will be able to sense the difference between genuine and disingenuine remorse. So, the next most important question an INFJ can ask when deciphering whether or not they should finally slam that door is simply, is this person actually sorry? Are they sorry just with their words or also their actions? Because INFJs know firsthand that apologies only count if there is changed behavior that follows. In other words, to the INFJ, saying sorry opens the door to healing, but it only does just that. It's up to both individuals to play their part in the forgiveness process once that door has been cracked. And with that information, INFJs are able to slowly choose whether or not the door slammy in the situation is really due for another chance. Plus, the INFJ specifically needs to keep in mind that it's okay to ask for more than just a couple of words in exchange for the pain someone caused them, especially if it's for the sake of avoiding an abrupt ending to the connection. Number 6. Have I reached my limit of chances given? Even with all the genuinity in the world, sometimes INFJs can see that the other individual truly believes their wrongdoings won't ever happen again. They genuinely think it's the last time, and that's when INFJs know to see their genuinity for what it is, rather than what they personally want it to be. Once this analytical type can sense a pattern forming through past disappointments with the same individual, no amount of emotion and empathy will surpass their logical perception. The kicker to it all is that INFJs subconsciously choose to forgive and forget for the sake of their own mental peace. This means that when the time comes to mentally gather up the data they've collected through past experiences, they'll find that the picture they've painted may be biasedly leaving out a few key negatives. However, when this empath type allows their logical side to take over, it's easier for them to take note of just how many last times and second chances have been given. 
This is when the harsh realizations and aha moments occur. Well, psychos, that's it for today's video. So, have you asked all six questions before door slamming in the past? Let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.